So um, we're talking about unit 14. Um, there's a new uh, piece of syntax for this lesson, which is about uh, so-called supplementary participles. Basically, he's written it down on the blackboard. Um, what's going on here is something interesting. Um, we the really comparable thing um, is uh, what are called complementary infinitives. Okay, so we could say there are supplementary participles and there are complementary infinitives. There are verbs whose meanings is incomplete are incomplete, um, which take an infinitive to complete them. So mm -hmm. these are verbs of the type I want to go, I want to mm -hmm. visit my mother, um, I want, wish, uh, intend. Those are the standard ones. Um, but there are a whole bunch of them, okay? And they're pretty much the same in Greek and in English. We have a little hook, so to speak, built into mm -hmm. the verb. And you complete the meaning of the verb with a with an infinitive. So complementary with an E, com complete, not complementary, <laughs> like right. making a compliment. It's always, <laughs> that's the essential idea. So in, in many Greek verbs take those complementary infinitives, but there are some that take instead of an infinitive, a participle. I don't think we're used to thinking of it this way, but really in the structure of the Greek verb, participles and infinitives are complementary, mm. um, and I mean that in, with the E sense, okay? Mm. Complementary kinds of forms, okay? There are other, we're gonna learn other kinds of syntax in which you have a choice between a participle or infinitive. Maybe, maybe uh, well, we haven't caught there yet, but we'll see others. So, so these are, there are, um, we do something like this in English, but I think it looks like something similar, but actually is something different. But the book starts out with a kind of this kind of deceptive example of what we do with verbs like that mean to begin or to cease. So you say in English, I stopped eating potatoes. Okay. Um, the trouble is that eating in that sentence is a gerund. Mm -hmm. It looks like a parcel, <laughs> but it's not, okay? But in Greek, the way you do that is to use a participle, okay? You can use a, you can say, I, st I stop, the verb for stop being pao, mm -hmm. and then you put the verb eating in a participle that agrees with the subject, okay? Um, or you can say, I began eating potatoes, and you, you do the same thing. Um, but that's, that, uh, so in a certain sense, you can see it's something like a complementary infinitive and in the, the verbal idea is being completed by that participle in Greek, the Greek case or the gerund in the English case where it's a noun derived from a verb, okay? Mm -hmm. At least there's that. But don't be fooled, those aren't participles, okay? Um, there are, uh, um, this is a phenomenon that has a pretty wide usage and it has, it, it, it's really specialized, I think, in Greek with certain verbs. And the, those verbs, let's make a list of them, Belisi. The verbs are, and they're weird verbs, the verbs are the verb lanthano, Okay, we'll talk about the meaning of these words in a second. Um, verb lanthano, the verb thano, phi, theta, alpha, nu. We haven't had either of these verbs. Um, the verb tunkhano, we haven't had that one either. Um, and uh, also the verb chairo, okay, to rejoice. So let's tell you what these verbs mean first. Lanthano means to, this is a concept that we do not have in English. It means escape notice, literally, which is not a concept, okay, for us. It means to do something without somebody else noticing you do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think one way to understand this is that Greek society is really fundamentally different from ours and that that the notion of um, the notion of community is so strong that it's almost as though nothing escapes anyone's <laughs> notice, okay? Everything happens in public, okay? And people have public identities. Their they communi their their communal life is so strong in terms of rituals and political activity and everything else. It's beyond our imagining. So doing something without somebody else noticing it is a is weird. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, and marks a kind of substandard behavior. Okay, because there's nobody else around to watch you and see you do it. Okay, for us, it's just not such a thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, thano, it, as a verb, means notice, I mean not notice, means anticipate, means to do something before somebody else does it, okay? I think maybe you can see from the awkward way in which I'm translating these things that you've got to have something else that you're doing for these verbal ideas to be complete. So you've got to escape notice doing something. Right. You've got to anticipate doing something, 
before somebody else does it. They just don't have a complete idea in themselves. And I think the clearer it's clearer when we come to the last two, which actually we have verbs like this, tung hano, which means happen to. Okay? Mm -hmm. Here's a case where we we use a complementary infinitive in English. I happen to run into someone. I happen to meet you. I happen to to fall off the car. Okay, whatever. <laughs> But that's a complementary infinitive. And instead of using an infinitive there, Greek uses a participle, okay? Mm -hmm. And the same is true of chairo, is, means to enjoy doing something, okay? So it's like, a bit like pao o and archomai, the verbs that mean stop and begin. We say, I enjoyed meeting you, right? Mm -hmm. And those are deceptively gerunds, but in Greek, they're going to be participles that complete the meaning of them. So, so the ones that are hardest to deal with are the first two, lanthano and thano, and you have to be careful, especially with lanthano, because um, you can escape notice of someone doing something, okay, or someone can escape notice of you mm -hmm. doing something. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so well, it works both ways, okay. If it's the first case in which the subject is escaping the notice doing the article, the participle is going to go in the nominative case, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you escape the notice of somebody else, like um, uh, um, I escaped notice of him stealing my cows, okay? Um, no, no, no. no. He, he escaped notice of me stealing his cows. That's what I meant to say. He my notice. Yes, right? yes. He escaped notice of me stealing my cows, okay, mm -hmm. all right, that's still going to be nominative, okay, um, we need to think of an example here, <laughs> um, let's see, we escape our friends notice doing this, that's nominative, but, but, um, the, we, the, let's, oh well, let, let's try and find something else, um, it's not the same. No, these are all examples of nominative, nominative participles. Yeah. Um, no, but I think it has to be the escape notice of me running away with his cow, cows. I think is right. Okay, the escape my notice, uh, escape notice of me stealing his cows. It doesn't work. Oh, no, it's still he escaped. My notice, like I didn't notice him, him stealing, stealing the, cows. the cows. Yeah, that's what we're trying to say. And in which case, you can see that the parser is going to agree with the him. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all the only point we're trying to make. Yeah. Okay, we get our heads around these weird concepts. Okay, but um, the, the the so the thing is to remember the way to deal with this is to remember these verbs. Okay, and and again, it's the phenomenon, the syntactical phenomenon of the when you're reading them, that little light bulb has to go off in your head. Okay. Mm -hmm that these particular verbs take a participle that completes their meaning, and you have to do that. So um, you have to watch out for them and see where they where the agreement is in order to translate them properly. There is here, there's an important caution about tunkhano, is that it means happen to when there's a participle going, going, that completes its meaning. But if there is not, it can mean get or obtain it's a completely different meaning, okay, mm -hmm. and it governs an object in the genitive case. Right. To hit upon is what it means to 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 obtain or get something, and, and that thing that you get or hit upon goes in the genitive. So you, you really have to be careful about noticing the participle that completes the meaning and seeing, in that case, which, which meaning it is. Mm -hmm.